a todos com a paz do Senhor. A greater will and the peace of the Lord. I'd like to invite those who can to stand up. In the book of, we're going to read the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 6. Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 10. The word of the Lord tells us the following. Who is she who looks forth as the morning, far as the moon, clear as the sun, awesome as an army with banners? Lord, we praise you. Thank you. We're thankful for this moment of fellowship. Uh, so that in your word you will once again be bless your people and your church in this place. We pray in the name of the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated.
esta que aparece como a alva do dia. Who is this that comes out, comes forth as the morning, for fair as the moon, clear as the sun, awesome as an army with banners. It speaks of the characteristics of a church. In the book of Songs of Solomon, it speaks of this relationship of this church, which is the bride of the Lord. The song that the children sing says, the beloved bride of the Lamb is being prepared for a meeting with her groom in a beautiful feast in heaven. So it speaks about this relationship. It speaks of, about this covenant, this pact, this alliance between Jesus with his church. That's why the book of Songs of Solomon is so beautiful. It expresses the feeling of love and gratitude between from one to another. I'm on my love with one, and he is mine. His eyes are the, like the eyes of doves. He pastures his flock uh, amongst the lilies, my beloved. Uh, his beloved tell her before the, did they become fresh we'll go to the mount of the myrrh he speaks of the price that he will pay for the rescue of his beloved his loved one his bride he speaks about the suffering of Jesus on the cross of Calvary so that through his blood he would be able to purchase his bride so we see here this feeling and all this expression of love between from one to another the loved one this church he says the following that 60 are the queens 80 are the lovers and the vernus are countless but there is only one which is whom is my dove, is the one that my spirit rests upon. It is only one, the one that is blameless. There is no stain, there is no blemish. Because she was washed and her garments were washed, uh, uh, whited out by the blood of the Lamb. So he speaks of about her only daughter of her mother, the one that was generated, prophetically speaking, because it was not the flesh or the blood, but was the one that was generated by the Holy Spirit, speaks of this church, the, the loved one that will be called the Blessed One. And here, he asks a question. Who is she who looks forth as the morning? And it's interesting that this expression, we see similar expressions on the Bible. When Jesus, he was on a boat with his, with his disciples, there was a storm, and Jesus reproached the sea and the wind and the disciples, the church of the Lord asked, who is this that even the wind and the sea gives order to them and they obey him? When we come to the book of Songs of Solomon, one of our brethren is surprised with a question. Somebody asks him, who, is, who are these? Where they came from? They are the ones who are being washed that her, her garments washed and whited out with the blood of the Lamb. And now the Lord asks a question. And he asks, Who is she who looks forth as the morning? Who is this one that comes out, uh, manifests, and appears uh, like, like uh, the morning? Because the period was a period of darkness. When John the Baptist, he was taken by the Lord to the desert. It was the voice that was shouting on the desert. He was preparing the path for the Lord Jesus. 
And on those days, how those days were, the people that was walking darkness, and there was a great, oh, upon the valley of the shadow death, there was a light that came up. The light shone upon us. And he speaks about this church with these characteristics that comes up in the moment of darkness to give a hope to a man. David, in Psalm 30, he says, the tears may last a whole night, but the joy comes in the morning. Blessed be in the name of the Lord. So this is the church that brings this hope, this joy, that gives man an opportunity and why coming up as the morning? What is this moment? The morning of the moment. The morning is a moment in which the sun has not shone yet. The moment in, in which the darkness and the night come to an end and the beginning of the sun, first light. So it is speaking about a church that proclaims the appearance of a new day, of a birth of a new day. Was a new day was born when this, like the children sing. And what is this new day? It's a day that is also described in the book of Songs of Solomon, a day in which his beloved, his church, will be taken away, will be raptured in a twinkling of an eye, in an instant, before the church is even felt it. It will be taken away because it is excellent, is form formidable, is noble, because it speaks of a people that the Lord has set apart for this moment to inherit his eternity. Who is this, who is she who looks forth as the morning? Sometimes men, men may be going through moments of darkness, of night, affliction, of suffering, and men does not see only, does not find a solution to his problems. When we sang a song here today, the Lord operated on the life of a man. And a part of the song says the following, make the light shine and give a solution that is revealed in Jesus. And that's the role of the faithful church, church to call the light to be born the light to shine, to bring peace, counsel, refreshing, hope, salvation for the life of man, and shows that only so the solution is only possible with Jesus. So the church that, that shines like the morning, like the servant Job, when he lost all he possessed, he lost his health, his uh, loved ones, but Joe didn't lose two things, the faith and the hope. Brother Paul in the New Testament, he, he speaks about this. Who is going to separate me from the love of God? Tribulation, anguish, hunger, pestilence. Because I know that even death or life and principalities and, and the present and what is to come, height and depth, will separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So the church is formidable, it's excellent. It's the one who comes up like the light of the new day, uh, like a morning. It's a church that has hope, that is awaiting on their Lord, that is hoping for the arrival of their Lord. That's why the brother Job, he says, he said in the past, even though he was going through so all that suffering, he said, I know that my Redeemer leaves. And at the end, he'll come up upon the earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. His hope was the Lord. The hope of the church is the Lord. Christ in us, hope of, of glory, hope for eternity. It's a church that comes up, that looks forth as the morning, fair as the moon. What is uh, so formidable about the moon? Why is the moon fair? Because it reflects the light of the sun. 
the moon without the sun it's nothing has no beauty no appearance you you are not even able to see it but what causes it to be beautiful fair is the light of the sun upon it the faithful church is faithful and beautiful is excellent because it receives every day the revelations from the lord and it transmits relays it to the world to give man and the world a hope to bring to man a comfort refresh and a relief that's why the church is fair because its beauty is the beauty of the lord is upon it like one day the the children sang shine your light forever clear as the sun so it is a church that reflects the brightness of the lord so when john peter and john they entered they were going to enter into the temple of the lord there was a man there with a need of a blessing they came to that man and said we don't have gold or silver but what we have we give you in the name of the jesus the nazarene get up and walk and the man got up and jumped and entered to the temple and glorified the name of the lord this is the church has the brightness of the lord has resource of the grace and power of god present in their lives to place men in the temple so that men may live in eternity with god awesome as an army with banners is an army with many banners when we pick up a second verse in the bible we'll go back in genesis it says the earth was shapeless and empty and the lord picked up a land that was shapeless and empty and transformed it into planet earth and gave life to it and adorned earth and embellished earth and made made earth to look beautiful that's what the lord does with the church and does with men picks up a man that deformed and empty and changes and modifies deeply the life of that human being and that's this god the god that gives form gives life that changes that transforms is the god of the faithful church a god of the church that will be raptured awesome as an army so one army a single body a single spirit so he speaks about the unity of the church about the fellowship with the lord a church that is uh, unique a church that that has their banners the pleading for the blood of jesus the prayer the fasting being vigilant the praises the word of god the church that has the means of grace and, and ch church manifests this resources so that everybody may see where their victory comes from because the lord is the one who gives us victory through the means of grace through the operation of the holy spirit of god in our midst in the midst of the church that's why the church is formidable because the lord has adorned it the lord made it look like this the lord had prepared the church and that's why there is the lament afterwards because there will be a lament because the church will be raptured it was going to be taken away as i said before come back come back or shulamite many times people do not give proper worth to the presence of the church on the on this earth in this world but when the church is taken away when the church is raptured there will be a lament a supplication a plea for their return 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 o shulamite so the word of the lord was will be why do you want to contemplate the shulamite do you know who sh the shulamite shulamite was shulamite was that woman that 
David, in his old age, he needed someone to help him warm up his body. When we are very old, we lose a lot of heat. The body loses a lot of heat. So they select a virgin to lay down with David. And David didn't, uh, uh, didn't sleep with her. So this woman was prepared to be with, with the Lord. It's the faithful church, the church of the last days. The church that is in the last hour is proclaimed that Jesus is coming, Jesus is returning. It's the church that is prepared and says to the ones who are not prepared that, are still, that there is still time. If today you hear the voice of the Lord, do not harden your heart. Because the desire of the Lord is that everyone may be saved and that they have the knowledge of the truth. So that's why the Lord presents a church, not a denomination, not a, a sign. It's not a market. It's not marketing. As the church speaks about how the church is going to be taken away, the church is going to be raptured, the church is, uh, comes forth like a morning, a fair uh, as the moon and clear as the sun. Of, it's an awesome church. Is this the church that the you, my brother and sister, may be a participant? Amen. The church was saying that the Lord has shown tonight a woman and she was placed before a king and before the king she was unable to raise her head because she was tied up and she was in darkness and she was awaiting for just one thing before that king, her condemnation. Because she knew that she was there to receive a condemnation sentence. And so the king told this woman, enter into my presence. 
and she would enter into the presence of the king, and she was set free from any condemnation. Jesus didn't come to kill and destroy. Jesus came to save men. The desire of the Lord tonight is to save you and to deliver you and to free you from any symptoms and any condemnation that is against your life because He loves you. And His desire is that you may be a part of this church that will be with Him on His eternity. The Lord also has shown that throughout the period of praises, the Lord saw angels. He saw angels here in this place, and the angels came to to exact three orders from the Lord. The first was to heal a couple of people who were sick here. The second one was to deliver from addictions, feelings, thoughts and of things that have prevented them from reaching the project of God for our lives. And the third was the opening of doors of new jobs for many members here. Amen. We're going to sing another song.
touch your soul. Hallelujah. In your name. Holy house. Glory to God. Holy your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your Lord and give you thanks. We are thankful for once again to be in your house, in your presence, for a blessing of being put out once again upon this place for our salvation, for the zeal, of care, and love, for a great mercy. We want to th praise you and thank you, Lord. We glorify your holy name because it's, they are being the cause that we are remaining standing in your presence. That we, are not, we are not destroyed. We praise you, Lord, because you are our hope. And in you, Lord, we have placed our faith in our lives. And we supplicate, Lord, that you may continue every day through the blood of Jesus, wash our garments and that we may white them out with the blood of your son Jesus. We ask, Father, that you may every bless each person who are here so that you may manifest your power upon them. The gifts that have been shared here, that they may have an, an important, uh, they have an importance to each heart, Lord. Take us home saved and cured and happy to know that this week is going to be a week that is blessed by you, Lord. We supplicate your blessing. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet and eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the people, the entire people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The brethren may be seated. The service is over. You, my brother and sister, who are with us, you are welcome to this place. We have service every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. On Saturdays at 6 o'clock, we have uh, women's meeting. And 7.30 we have on Saturday and Sunday, we have 7.30. We have also service of glorification on Sunday and Saturdays. Every Sunday at 10.30 in the morning, we are gathered here to learn a little more, a little more from the Lord in our Sunday school. You, my brother and sister, we invited to be with us and to participate. If you desire prayer for your life, a clarification of the spiritual gifts of what was relayed tonight, remain where you are, raise your hand so that we may identify you, and therefore you may receive the proper assistance.